for more on the impact of U.S.-China trade tensions, my colleague Francis Ko spoke to Mr. John Kelch. He's the dean of the University of Miami's Herbert Business School, and she asked him how these trade talks will fare in the new year. Well, it's a Christmas truce. Um, there is no signed deal at this point. There is the promise of a signed deal, and therefore I would not expect the, uh, the economic euphoria to be that uh, high until the deal is actually inked. Um, however, it's very encouraging, especially for Chinese manufacturers of those goods that would have had um, a 15 percent tariff imposed on them on December 15th. Uh, they are off the hook. Uh, in addition, also encouraging for those manufacturers of products uh, that uh, are going to see a reduction from 15 to 7.5 percent of the tariffs that have already been imposed on them. So selectively within the Chinese economy, there are definitely uh, some uh, suppliers, some manufacturers who are going to be pleased uh, to see this kind of progress. Um, but we have to wait, of course, until the deal is signed because uh, we already have been there once this year where we had a deal, uh, we thought we had a deal, and then it was not signed. Uh, so cautious optimism at this point. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned manufacturing. Uh, what sectors, what other sectors in China do you expect will perform better because of this deal? And, and which ones do you expect will continue to struggle? Well, I think uh, what we've seen over the course of the past year uh, has been a very significant resilience on the part of the Chinese economy uh, to deal with this onslaught of uh, tariffs uh, that have been imposed from uh, Washington. Uh, certainly, these tariffs have had a dampening effect on economic uh, growth, uh, but there are many manufacturers in China who have uh, uh, improved the efficiencies of their production, improved the efficiencies of their supply chains, uh, found alternative customers outside of the United States, uh, perhaps in Europe, uh, and in some cases, uh, there are companies that have moved a portion of their Chinese production uh, offshore to other Asian countries with lower cost labor. That's a trend that, of course, was already underway, perhaps accelerated a little bit by uh, the imposition of the tariffs. Um, but overall, I would say that uh, consumer goods manufacturers have been the ones that have been left to the end of the line in terms of the tariffs being imposed. Um, they're the ones that have suffered, I think, the least. However, the manufacturers of intermediate components and industrial products, uh, those are the manufacturers who have uh, uh, suffered more under the tariff regime uh, over the past year. Yeah, you mentioned the, the tariffs. If we could just kind of talk broadly in, in terms of this year and the, and the trade and tariffs and how it has affected the Chinese economy in general. And what do you expect going into, into next year, into 2020? So as far as next year is concerned, I would expect uh, Chinese growth to be comparable to what it has been uh, this year. Uh, maybe if we can see a phase two deal uh, signed as well as the phase one deal, uh, that will give a lift, a confidence boost to the Chinese economy, to investors in China, uh, that could drive uh, economic growth by a further, uh, let's say, half a percentage point of GDP. I know we're speculating a little bit here, but what do you think is the, the best case and the worst case scenario for this trade relationship between the U.S. and China in 2020? The worst case scenario is definitely that the phase one deal that has been announced ends up not being signed. Uh, that that deal unravels the way uh, the deal unraveled uh, in the middle of this uh, past year of 2019. Uh, the best case scenario would be that we move on from a phase one deal to a phase two deal that rolls back uh, all of the tariffs in both directions and at the same time uh, has a measure of um, improvement from a U.S. perspective in uh, guarantees of IP rights, um, the uh, 
reduction in uh, requirements for forced technology transfer, as the U.S. characterizes it, and also um, something that speaks to the structural uh, subsidies that are enjoyed by state-owned enterprises and a level playing field for uh, investments running in both directions from U.S. to China and from China to the U.S. Uh, that would be the best scenario uh, that would put us back to the position we were in before the first tariffs were imposed, but with a certain amount of improvement uh, in uh, the uh, areas that are a little bit more intractable, the IP and uh, subsidies areas that the U.S. has expressed so much concern about.